Guys, we are so excited to have you with us at our virtual Christmas Eve family worship service. We are going to combine the best traditions of Christmas Eve as well as all of the fun that we normally have on the family worship service on Sunday mornings. We're going to enjoy an evening full of singing and praise and celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift to us. Make sure to have your Christmas Eve candles ready at the end when we sing Silent Night together. If you didn't grab a kit at church, feel free to grab some candles around the house so that you can participate in this wonderful, wonderful tradition. We're so excited to have you here with us tonight.
Hope moves us. Advent love leads us. Advent joy stirs us. Advent peace stills us, that we might affirm our King, Jesus. It is time we set flame to this Advent affirmation by lighting the Christ candle. We believe that Jesus is the Son of God. He was born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem of Judea. He was the long-awaited Messiah whose coming was prophesied. The same Jesus lives today in our hearts. He deserves our highest loyalty and total commitment. In Jesus Christ, our hope is fulfilled. Our love is consummated. Our joy is complete. And our peace is sealed. Rejoice, a Savior is born. A savior, a savior is born, born indeed. indeed. Joy, Joy to the world. This is the Christmas story. The Christmas story began a long time ago, but it didn't begin with a baby. It began with a promise. God made a promise after Adam and Eve, the first people, disobeyed him and sin darkened the world. God promised that someday, someone would come to bring light into the dark world. Genesis 3, 14 through 15. So the Lord God said to the serpent, I will put hostility between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. Many years later, God promised a man named Abraham that his family would have more people in it than there are bright stars in the night sky. And one of those people would bring light into the dark world. Abraham believed and he praised God. Genesis 22, 17 through 18. I will indeed bless you and make your offspring as numerous as the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. And all of the nations of the earth will be blessed by your offspring because you have obeyed my command. Abraham's family grew bigger and bigger, just like God had promised. They became the nation of Israel and they asked God to give them a king. 1 Samuel 8, 19 through 20. The people refused to listen to Samuel. No, they said, we must have a king over us. Then we'll be like all the other nations. Our king will judge us, go out before us, and we'll fight our battles. So God chose a boy from the little town called Bethlehem to be their king. His name was David. David was a very good king, but the world was still dark. 1 Samuel 13, 14. The Lord has found a man after his own heart, and the Lord has appointed him as ruler over his people. Then God promised David that someone from his family would be the light that would bring, that would be the one to bring light into the dark world. David believed and he praised God. 2 Samuel 7, 22 and 24. That is why you are great, Lord God. There is no one like you. There is no God beside you. As all we have heard confirms, you established your people Israel to be your people forever, and you, Lord, have become their God. Many years later, God told a man named Isaiah to give a very special message to his people. The light of the world is coming. Isaiah believed, and he praised God. Isaiah 9, 6-7 for a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will be on his shoulders, 
He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. The dominion will be vast and its prosperity will never end. He will reign on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish and sustain it with justice and righteousness from now on and forever. Isaiah told the people that the one who was coming would be God himself. God would come to them as a baby. The baby would be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. See, the virgin will conceive, have a son, and will name him Emmanuel. So the people waited and waited and waited and waited and waited and waited for 400 more years. Micah 7, 7. But I will look to the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. Then one day, an angel named Gabriel told a young woman named Mary that she was going to have a baby. Mary was scared, but the angel told her not to be afraid. Luke 1, 30 through 31. Then the angel told her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Now listen, you will conceive and give birth to a son and you will name him Jesus. Gabriel said that Mary's child was a gift from God, the light of the world God had promised his people. Mary believed and she praised God, Luke 1, 46 through 47. And Mary said, my soul praises the greatness of the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior. Mary was engaged to a man named Joseph. The angel also visited him in a dream. He told Joseph that the baby was from God and he should name the baby Jesus. Joseph believed and he praised God. Matthew 1, 20 through 21, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in the dream saying, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife because what has been conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sin. Joseph was of the family of Abraham and King David. God was keeping his promises to them. Luke 2, 4, Joseph also went up to the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the family line of David. Because of a law, Mary and Joseph needed to travel to Joseph's hometown. While they were there, it was time for Mary to have a baby. Luke 2, 1 and 3. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole empire should be registered. So everyone went to be registered, each to his own town. Into the darkness, after all that waiting, the light of the world was born. John 1, 9, the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. This is the Christmas story. Mary wrapped Jesus up in a blanket and laid him in a manger where the animals were fed. Luke 2, 19, but Mary was treasuring all these things in her heart and meditating on them. That same night, some shepherds were watching their sheep in fields nearby. Suddenly, angels filled the dark sky, singing because Jesus was born. Glory to God in the highest. Luke 2, 13 through 14. Suddenly, there was a multitude of heavenly hosts with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to the people he favors. The shepherds hurried to find Jesus. He was right where the angel said he would be. The shepherds believed and they praised God. Luke 20 or 2, 20. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had seen and heard, which were just as they had been told. Later, wise men called Magi saw a bright star in the dark sky. They followed the star across the desert. They found Jesus, the light of the world. The wise men believed and they praised God. Matthew 2, 10 through 11. When they saw the star, they were overwhelmed with joy. Entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and falling to their knees, they worshiped him. We celebrate Christmas because Jesus came to be the light of the world. First, or John 1, 5, 4-5. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and yet the darkness did not overcome it. The Christmas story began with a promise, but it also ends with one. Jesus, the light who came into the dark world, promises that one day he will return and the world will never be dark again. Revelation 22, 5. 
Night will be no more. People will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun because Lord God will give them light and they will reign forever and ever. We believe and we praise God. The end. Guys, that was so amazing. I loved, loved, loved reading you the Christmas story. What we're going to do now is we are going to break out into our family discussion time. So on the next slide, you'll see the discussion questions that you guys get to answer together as a family. And always remember our bottom line for the night is to celebrate Jesus, God's greatest gift to us. Will you join me in a word of prayer? God, thank you for sending us your son as a baby into this world. Thank you for the life that he lived and the life that he gives us. Help us to celebrate Christmas by remembering Jesus. As we spend time with our families this holiday, whether in person or through phone calls or over screens, help us remember that Jesus knows what it's like to have a family. Jesus knows what it's like to live and be like us because he came to earth as a baby. We celebrate your birth now, Jesus. We love you 
And we ask that you wrap us in your love as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please join me in the Christmas affirmation of faith. I believe in Jesus the Christ and in the power of the gospel, which began in Bethlehem. I believe in the one whose spirit glorified a small village, of whose coming the shepherds saw the sign, and for whom there was not room in the inn. I believe in the one whose life changed the course of history, for whom the kings of earth had no power, and who was not understood by the proud. I believe in the one whom the poor, the oppressed, the discouraged, the afflicted, the sick, the blind, the leprous, gave welcome and accepted as Lord and Savior. I believe in peace, reconciliation, forgiveness, and the transforming power of the gospel. I believe that Christmas is strength and power, and that this world can change if with humility and with faith we kneel before the manger. I believe that I must be the first to do so. Arise, shine, dear people, for our light has come. Christ is the world's true light on our paths and in our lives. Receive the light and let its warmth and glow be in your hearts this night. The glory of the Lord shines around us on this night. So as we light our candles together, may the light that began at creation continued through the witness of the prophets and has come to the fullness at the birth of Jesus Christ be in your hearts and your minds this evening. I invite you now to get your Christmas Eve candlelight kits ready, or if you did not receive one, go ahead and find a candle or two at your home and join us as we light the Christ candle and celebrate Christmas Eve together. And then we will sing Silent Night together as well. So I light my candle off of the Christ candle, symbolizing the power and the hope we receive from the light of Christ in hopes that we pass it on in joy, peace, and hope for the world. Let us join together in singing Silent Night. Thank you. 
Thank you so much for celebrating Christmas Eve with us. We hope that you have a very, very Merry Christmas and that you had as much fun as we did. From all of us here at Noblesville First to you, Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. I'm Bonnie with Noblesville First. And whether you're a dad type Santa or a mom type Santa, Mrs. Santa, or whether you're a kid type Santa, can I tell you a little secret why I like Santa Claus? This is why I like Santa Claus because he knows who his king is, baby Jesus, and he kneels at the manger to worship baby Jesus. So he loves Jesus, and Jesus loves him, just as he loves all of you. Merry Christmas, everyone. We love to have you here at Noblesville First. Merry Christmas. Hi, I'm Pastor Mary Eileen Spence. I'm a pastor of parish care here at Noblesville First. And I would like to wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> From our family to yours. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. And a healthy, happy new year.